So I got the Barracuda turned around the garage to make the rear of it um, more accessible. Uh, we got our frame jig re-leveled out and the car is solid, it's not moving. Um, I'll go through this a little bit closer, um, but most of the back of this car is going to be cut off. I think we're going to do it all at once since we're mounted on the frame jig so tight. Um, let's look real quick. I got a video I did two months ago of this rear floor pan install. So we'll cut to that now. We'll come back and uh, go over what we're going to do. So I already got the old floor pan cut in out of place. Um, we're installing the new AMD one piece floor pan. Um, I already got all my holes in place over the frame rails which are on a frame jig so they're not going to move. I'm not worried about any of that and I'm just going around clamping where I'm going to do my rosette welds and everything else. I had to take a bottle jack and uh, this crossbar to kind of just give it a little bit, help the floor push down against the frame rails in a couple areas. Um, that's fairly normal on some of the sheet metal. We got kind of massage it to go a little bit and that's all I'm doing is just slowly moving the bottle jack forward off the quarter panels pushing it down. Um, I'm not going crazy to bend the quarter panels or anything. Um, they're going to be replaced anyway, but that was the easiest way to go. And then I did, once I got the sides worked in, I decided to work the rear um, outward and I'll work the driver's side outward. Um, after that we'll go ahead and uh, we're gonna right here actually I decided to cut um, the upper um, rear uh, rear tail panel piece um, it was just in my way it's not doing anything um, I left it on there for a while just to kind of hold the quarter pal panel still and everything else so it was just easier for me to cut at this point to be able to access the floor pan itself uh, to go ahead and clean everything up Now that we got the two side frame rails done, um, driver and passenger side all welded up in the rear of the uh, trunk pan, I decided to work my way to the front last. Um, you can see I'm starting in the middle and kind of working my way out with the bottle jack again and the hammer to just kind of massage everything together off the, the front floor pan and the rear shock cross member. Uh, here we are with the grinding wheel. We're just cleaning up um, all the welds. Uh, takes a little bit and tedious process but you have to do it it just sometimes makes the project look that much better so I'll go through with this grinding wheel and I'll go through the flap disc and what I do with this uh, floor pan you'll see in the next video I put some epoxy primer on it knowing it was going to sit for a couple months and then you know we're going to move on to the front of the car before we jump on I also did four full floor pans on this car so if you missed it go back a couple of videos and you'll see So now that the floor pan, I showed you how we put that on there, um, we'll go through the other parts we're going to end up cutting out. It might be a two, three video depending on, because there's a lot of work here. We're pretty much going to cut the entire rear of this car off, except the package tray and these two trunk brackets, just the upper portion. So what we're going to end up replacing by the end of when this is all said and done is going to be both quarter panels. We're going to do the trunk gutters. The tail panel obviously has been half removed already. Um, we're going to do the trunk extensions on both sides, the inner and outer wheel houses, these lower brackets for the trunk, and there's a bracket behind here of the inner structure going to the wheel wells that's going to be also removed. Um, the goal, I think, um, is get most of the quarter panels removed. I want to leave this center section in here first and I want to access the inner structure and replace that and then kind of fit the quarter panels and the wheel wells but don't weld anything up and then once I verify trunk gap and how the rear tail panel goes we'll take it from there so stick with us either this video if it runs long it'll just make a two a part two of this and uh, hopefully in a little bit we'll have the whole rear of this car will be brand new. So here we are, we're ripping out the um, quarter panel first. We'll do this side. We're just using a cutoff wheel. Um, I'm just going around the outside real quick and just trying to expose what's underneath. Um, nothing on this quarter panel is going to be saved. So I'm just kind of just taking it off, uh, not worried about damaging it. I don't want to cut the inner structure. So I'm just going around the edges first, see what I got. Um, I kept it low because there's some holes for the vinyl top. I might want to use as a template if we decide to go back on the vinyl top. 
Um, about got the quarter panel off here um, and with it I'm trying to take the trunk extension piece off at the same time and there it is it come off and it's removed and there's two rivets under here where the quarter panel meets the roof section the air hammer just took off this could just be exposed to more of the inner structure like I said, we're doing the inner structure now. That was all rotted away. Um, we had to do some closer looking. You could see how bad it was. So I got that whole piece removed with once the roof and the quarter panel were out. Um, I'm trying to do this whole car in little sections at a time and using the old pieces to jig up the new pieces because the car had good body lines for the most part and was pretty straight. Um, so I just got this inner structure piece um, for the, you know, the B pillar. Um, tack, um, clamped in place and now we're just welding it um, you could see where my plug welds are gonna go just right up that frame channel and then you'll see in a second we're gonna put the second piece on top of it but I'm trying to do these one at a time just to make it easier on this side for me So finishing up these welds and now we're on to the next piece uh, which is the upper portion of this inner frame structure piece um, just same thing clamping in place once I remove the old one um, just drilling out the spot welds and using an air chisel was the way to go um, both of these pieces were test fit beforehand that's how I know where all the holes were together and then now I'm just welding them on one at a time and that's how they go in At this point, we're going to move on to the inner wheel or the wheel wells. Um, we're just removing the old wheel well right now. Um, I left it in there, like I said, to kind of gauge where those last frame pieces are. But take the air hammer, um, just knocking out, drilling the spot weld. Same thing, this process just goes over and over again. At this point, we decided to move on to the other side and just take a look at the inner structure. Um, I had to order parts for the other side on some other stuff that I was missing. So I decided to cut the quarter panels off on this side and see what surprises await us. And we found out, of course, like most of these cars, it's way worse than we thought. Um, I don't know if Mopar used any kind of primer underneath these cars, but apparently this one missed that day because everything on the inner structure, it seemed like was rotted away. Uh, this side needed not only the frame pieces replaced in the last part, but you'll see it needs some actual of the support pieces behind the skins too. Um, so we got this off, the quarter panel off, and we got these parts ordered. And we'll kind of go on to the next part and then pick it back up whenever these parts come in. Um, so you'll see it in a little bit later in the video. So here we are back on the wheel wells. Um, we're going to go ahead and weld these on. Um, I decided to braze these uh, wheel wells. You'll see on this side, I, I really like the silicone uh, bronze brazing. You'll see the whole floor pans on the car are done. If you looked at old videos versus the new one, I just grind it down and then that's what I use on my seam sealer. It's non-corrosive and it lasts forever. And I'll show you a video of me doing it on um, the actual floor pan after we get this wheel well in. So now that the lower part of the underside of the wheel wells is brazed and it's welded together I can put the wheel well in this sense in one piece fit up in itself um, using the other pieces like I said as kind of reference points on where I want this wheel well to go um, you know so I decided to go through I clamped it um, now prior to this I also test fit the wheel well with those Calico clamps Calico clamps um, and then I, I welded the two outer inner wheel wells to itself. Now that the inner outer wheel wells are clamped together and in place, we'll go through and I'll show you how we're welding it up. I like to start in the top and work my way back. Um, there's a support channel and then I'll bring it down on the front right here. Um, I think that's the easiest way just get the top all welded and that parts a little bit move and the bottom's not going to move because you could see there's about 15 clamps there but I'll usually when I work my way down I'll work my way back up through the bottom and follow that pattern um, 
as long as everything's clamped and nothing's moving I don't think you'll get yourself in too much trouble um, main thing is just pre-fitting this thing test fitting moving it around and just once you weld you're you're committed to where it's gonna be so as I was saying you know you could see the the silicon bronze in there where I ground it down and cleaned it up uh, you could see the welds at the top of the inner wheel well for the support coming down that's the good penetration that I welded down so you got to make sure you're getting that with your welds um, you want that penetration through it so I'm just mounting to the inner rocker right now and then we'll just follow the wheel well um, right on the, the rear floor pan section right there right down in between all the clamps I have my clamps strategically placed where I can get to most of the wells without even messing with them so as I told you I was gonna show you a video of uh, me brazing uh, brazing you're not actually doing a weld puddle you kind of just melt in the filler rod which is a silicone bronze rod into the uh, on top of the metal um, so brazing, soldering, that's basically what you're doing. This has many uses. I was first introduced to it a while back and I love it. Any chance I get, I think it looks so cool with that gold look on it. Um, so here's some finished pictures of wheel wells with, uh, without it being cleaned up. This was done on AC, this TIG brazing. So in this part of the video, we're going to go ahead and put on the trunk brackets to the wheel wells. Um, you can see I'm using these Coleco clamps again. Um, they remove and uh, I might put some sheet metal screws in, but I'm not going to go ahead and weld this till after the quarter panels and everything are on the car because this has a little bit of up and down adjustment that I think will just be able to get my body to shim out a little bit better. So just, just an idea there, um, I mean I'm going to weld the bottom, but you can see it's got that up and down movement. So we'll just leave these clamps in until the quarter panels, I'm really happy with the gaps and everything. So here we are, same process, just welding them in. Um, I also, you could see, I did put a mount on the front of these on both sides, just to kind of hold them in place. Just, I don't want to take them off and move them too much. So like I said, we had to go to the other side. This side was way worse under the quarter panel. Um, we didn't know about till we pulled the quarter panel off. So I had to order some inner structure pieces. That's why we kind of jumped ahead to the wheel wells and we're coming back to this portion of it. But here we are, we got our frame pieces in. Um, this side I did it all one time. There's nothing welded in until I knew everything fit perfect. Uh, the reason being I just took too much out of the car. I supported the parts that were staying as best I could. But the only way to really do it, I felt, and you know, make sure everything was in the right place, was to put everything at the same time and clamp it. I have all my holes pre-drilled, pre-staged, and I can get to it from both sides. So it's not that bad where I can go ahead and once every clamp's on this thing, know that's where I want it, and then we can go ahead and weld it. Um, actually, this made it a little bit quicker to do it this way. I still had to do a lot of prep work that you didn't see. That's how I know everything fit pretty good. So a lot of this stuff I cut out, the real boring stuff. This is just the final assembly that gives you the most satisfaction. And now we're on to weld it. Um, I decided to weld this lower frame rail section first. Um, it's a major support piece and I want it on that main back channel that holds pretty much the rear window and the whole rear um, roof and everything. So you could kind of see how I'm welding this. Um, I did that and then I decided to go on the inside and weld up that frame rail just to hold the back section first. And you could see on this video too, uh, the penetration I'm getting through with my weld. Again, that's uh, key if you're not seeing that your welds aren't strong enough and they might not hold also obviously everything and everywhere we're welding has weld through primer um, I'm a big fan of that you can see I left the bare metal spots that I can get to and I'm welding from the top down um, this was the one section I had to weld underneath I just kind of scooted that one piece out of there and clamped it back on where I had to go to get you know make sure the welds underneath and then it's pinch welded on top we're just finishing up going down the uh, window channel and everything um, 
I wasn't able to actually stick that piece that that frame rail slides into the channel of the roof I just butt welded it there um, there it's sandwiched in between two pieces so there was no real good way to do it without messing a bunch of stuff up um, but yeah we're just working our way up moving a clamp you know once it's we don't need it and uh, finishing up on this project So here we are, this is what I was talking about the wheel well on the other one, I couldn't put this video first, but um, this is the process in putting the inner and outer wheel well and getting them test fitted together before you weld the whole structure. So you see we got the inner wheel well in, um, then we stick the outer wheel well on the outside. Um, we're kind of clamping them, aligning them, make sure the inside of it all fits really good. Um, this is obviously a lot better if you have um, two people to help you out with that and then I just clamp them right down the center where I want them and actually you could see even with the clamps I have them tight but I can kind of push the inside kind of modify it a little bit to just get it just perfect where I want it and that's what I'm doing with that body hammer right now just put forcing the inside where I want it and they're lined up once you have it good and clamped and test fitted where you want you can go ahead and weld the inner and outer wheel well together. Um, I do this first and then you'll see once this is welded up we pull the whole piece out together and then I go ahead and I braze the inside of it again. Um, this is AC. I'm using a number 12 gas lens 316 blue tungsten. Um, you can AC or DC um, the silicone bronze rod just your preference. So here we are now that it's all brazed up and uh, all together cleaned up all the welds are we go ahead and reinstall it as one piece knowing it's going to fit because it was already mocked up and welded in place. So just a little bit of pushing a little bit of forcing clamping um, take your time it should go back in exactly where it was before. Now we'll move on that the wheel wells are in. We'll go ahead and move on to the trunk extensions. Um, these, when they came, they had too much of a curve in them. I actually had to flatten them out quite a bit. Um, I mean, I got to match them pretty good. But once we got the clamp in there, we just kind of finagle them with the body hammer a little bit and just take some of the arch out of them. Um, the best way, since the wheel wells are in there, is a good guide. I was able to kind of just match them off the rear trunk pan and uh, just clamp them right to the wheel wells and uh, support channel underneath um, and at this point I show where I'm going to drill them. So this part in time we're going to go ahead and remove the deck filler panel. Um, I was using it just to kind of hold everything in place back here but we don't need it anymore. Um, so I mean real simple just like with the quarter panels cut off wheel just ripping um, leaving the trunk brackets I could have taken them off but there's really nothing wrong with a trunk hinge bracket so we decided to leave those on there um, but we go ahead and cut around the center bracket and uh, remove that here's a couple pictures we pulled the roof off the car too um, some before and afters I'm gonna do a whole video on this car on the roof installation when we get to that point on to the next step. I know I said we weren't going to do a, a package tray in this car. Upon further inspection, once we got the deck filler panel off, um, it was just all ate up back there. It, it's hard to see to start pulling panels off and then the more you get into it, the more you start replacing. Everything else is replaced on this car. Why not just put a, the deck filler panel in there too? Um, so the process in this is A, remove the old one um, and then you want to do the edges first is how I found best um, they're just your your reference guide points and once they're set properly you can go ahead and put your center piece in as you could see um, I think around the back too you want a good tight clamp on the ones in the back there's these brackets back there and I think that really helps pull everything together um, this 
centerpiece still didn't fit 100% perfect and you'll see in the next video we're going to use uh, what's called a monkey on the stick and this is it. It's pretty much a, a jack handle and it's a spreader or pull in tool depending on how you need it. If you're messing with these pan pa panels this is a must have tool and you could see right there it only took one one pump on the jack the ratchet and it kind of just pulled that whole thing right open um, just centering the deck filler panel make sure everything looks good before the final clamping and especially before we weld it um, and then you'll see once I just get it all clamped I just pull the resistance off this uh, monkey on a stick and we move on here's a couple uh, pictures with the car um, 180 grit prepped we got all the brazing work in it um, we're gonna go ahead and put this whole car in epoxy now um, I really love the silicone bras on all the seams and the trunks and everything else it really stands out but it's gonna be primed over so you're never gonna see it again so a couple cool pictures of it and then uh, we'll move on to some priming and here we are we got our um, epoxy gray primer um, I'm just gonna put this on there there's too much bare metal and at this point there's no outer skins on the car this thing I went heavy on this stuff we're never gonna be able to get in these areas once we put the quarter panels and everything on so especially in those area the quarter panel where the roof's gonna go and all these hard to reach places we're gonna spray some extra right now and know that this car is gonna have its protection and not gonna rust like it did the last time so all this hard work will hopefully be protected um, and it's just going to be a good foundation underneath the quarter panels and everything. We're going to wrap up the 71 Barracuda inner structure um, assembly. I know we were talking in the middle of the video we might get to the quarter panels. That will probably be a part two. Um, we left it off here at a good stopping point where most of the inner structure is done. Um, we got everything in epoxy primer, like I said, to protect it. Um, you'll see we did some roof patching where if you look at this video, you're going to miss some, like, the car looks um, like it's got some rust spots and then magically everything fixed. I'm going to add that to a roof install video later. Um, I'm trying to organize my videos. I mean, we've done all the inner structure, the roof and the back area. So we'll walk through a couple things. Uh, on another video, these drip rails will be installed, so stay tuned for that. Um, I did some upper patches up in that area. You can see I, I was adding small patches. I got cut three holes in for the roof bows, but we got both wheel wells in. The inner structures on both sides. We did the package tray. Um, we re went over the floor pan just because I wanted to touch that thing up. It was just at the factory, um, the factory black epoxy. So I just went through and just kind of took from the rear doors of the car back and we just sealed everything in epoxy, including the roof. We rust converted everything. Uh, it's been wire brushed, cleaned up, and sealed in epoxy. Um, over here, we did uh, the wheel tubs, you saw the video on that. Um, so they're all installed, finished. These brackets, um, I've done wheel tubs on a 72. These are only on 70 and 71 cars. The indentation will be there. Um, don't freak out if you have a 72 or even I think late 71. Um, you probably won't need the brackets there for the win window regulator. So 70 and early 71 will have those. Um, if you go around to the back, um, what I decided to do here, we left these uh, brackets. The back of it is held on where they were. I might have to move them, but I didn't weld them into the package tray. We're going to get our gaps and our quarter panels on. And the idea is to weld this, screw it in, tack it when we get our trunk on where we want it. Same thing with the height with these clamps. We can move these brackets for the most part where we want them. Um, all the brazing work's done. Uh, we cleaned up the trunk pan, which you saw earlier in the video. Um, same thing on this bracket, still got to weld that in. But um, everything, for the most part, is sealed up tight. So when we put the outer quarter panels, we know this isn't going to rust. So that's what we got um, right now. We're going to go ahead and our next step is going to be work on um, the rear um, deck filler panel. Then we're going to work on the trunk gutters and then the rear towel panel, I think build upon there. You know, I've been thinking about how to do this for a while, but 
Um, this is the main thing, get the bones of the car done, and we'll start temporarily fitting stuff. Um, you'll see, stay tuned, that'll be the next video. I got a couple other things to work on, but we'll be back on this and we'll get jumping on it. Um, thank you for staying along, uh, watching the videos, liking comments, um, you know, sharing them with your friends and everything. Um, appreciate the feedback and again, thank you.